Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the first episode of the Azure Academy's Windows Virtual Desktop Specialty Study Guide. This is for the AZ140 certification. In this video, we're going to be focusing in on our resource groups, subscriptions, and management groups. What are they? Why do we need them? And what do they have to do with WVD? I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Well, it's always a good practice to begin with the end in mind. So I know you want to deploy Windows Virtual Desktop and get your environment up and running and get all prepared for the certification exam. So before you start building and deploying your host pools and all of your clients, you need to prepare your Azure environment. So today I want to share with you a very high level on some Azure governance features that will help you to organize your resources, control costs, and secure your organization. Now don't worry if governance sounds like something big and complicated and scary. It isn't. It Just think of it as the rules of the environment. So this is the policies, permissions, and compliance in your Azure world that should all be there before you build any kind of workload, including Windows Virtual Desktop. So this will just be a short overview, and if you're interested in more on this topic, just go right to the Azure Academy channel. And while you're here, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, as well as the notification bell on the video that you're currently watching, because the videos in this study guide series are gonna come out just as fast as I can do them. So it won't be on my normal schedule of every Sunday. So that way you have enough time to study everything before you go and take the test. So more on governance you can find over in the playlists. And you can see there's a bunch here on a lot of different topics and the governance playlist is right over there. So let's talk about organizing the cloud. Now in the skill sheet, it talked about recommending the right management group, subscription and resource group for your WVD resources. So what does organizing those resources have anything to do with WVD? Well, it's because of what those things do. It's all of the permissions and policies, compliance, all of that stuff that's going to impact your WVD resources. If you're trying to get to 30 users on a particular VM, but the only SKUs that you're allowed to use are ones that you could only get to 10 users on a VM, you're not going to get to the density numbers that you want, and this could impact cost. This is where we're going to set up our management hierarchy so we can consistently apply those rules, the access controls, policies, permissions, and compliance for all of our resources across all of Azure. Now in Azure, we have four possible levels of management scope, and that is the management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and then resources. And this is a waterfall hierarchy. So things that you apply at the top will flow down to the bottom. Now, management groups, let's talk about that. If your organization has more than one subscription, you'll need a way to manage everything across those subscriptions. And so management groups are a container that will help you apply your governance conditions, those permissions, policies, and compliance, across all of those subscriptions from one place. All of those subscriptions will automatically inherit all of those conditions that you applied at the management group above it, and management groups themselves can be nested, and we can have a hierarchy kind of like this. You can see we have at the top a single group, and then different layers of management groups and subscriptions, and of course underneath all of that is resource groups and resources. One good thing to note here is that all of the subscriptions that you want under a single management group need to all be associated with the same Azure Active Directory tenant. Going back down our waterfall one level, we have subscriptions. A subscription can be thought of as a billing entity. It is also something that is limited by quotas, which means the amount of resources that you can create. Now, some of these limits can be raised if you just put in a support ticket. For example, the number of cores for a VM SKU in one particular region. Subscriptions also help you to manage your cost because everything in that resource group's cost will roll up to the subscription as a whole. And all of those governance things that we talked about in the management group section will all be applied on top of the subscription and everything from here flows down to our resource groups. So let's talk about that. Now a resource group is a logical container in Azure in which resources are placed and managed. Resource groups must be located in a Azure region and its purpose is to contain those resources 
and metadata about those resources like permissions, locks, deployments, and more. And the reason for building out resource groups is for organizational purposes, specifically around the area of lifecycle management. So you build a resource group, it's because everything in that group is associated together. So they should be built together, updated together, deleted together. That's the general idea. And just like with the subscriptions, the resource groups will inherit any policies, permissions, etc. that's in the subscription above them. And at the bottom of the waterfall, we have our resources. These are instances of a service that you would create, like your WVD host pools, virtual machines, storage accounts, networks, etc. All resources must be in a resource group, and they will inherit those policies, permissions, and everything, just like everything above it in the waterfall. And one important thing to keep in mind is that your resources do not have to be in the same region as the resource group. So you may be wondering if a resource group has to have a location and the resources can have a different location, why does the resource group location matter at all? Well, it's the resource group that stores metadata about those resources. So when you specify a location for a resource group, you're saying that's where I want the metadata stored. So you may have some compliance or data sovereignty restrictions that need you to keep that data in a specific region. Now there's two final things that I'll mention around this idea of governance and organizing your resources, and that is a naming convention and tags. So having a good consistent naming convention across all of your different resource types is going to help everyone to know where things are and what they do. Secondly, tags. Tags are additional metadata that you can attach to your Azure resources or resource groups. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that everything should always have tags. But why? What do they do for us? Now a tag is a key and value pair. And that's the greatest thing about tags is I can make them anything that I need to. The bad thing about tags is I can make them anything I want to. Now you may have a tag like application and your values could be like Windows Virtual Desktop, DevOps, networks, etc. But what if somebody made a tag of application Mickey Mouse? And that kind of tag probably doesn't add value to you. So coming up with a good tagging strategy of what adds value in your environment will help you to not only organize things and understand the cost, the billing, who owns it, who's responsible for it, who supports it. Now these things can be implemented through Azure policy automatically on your resource groups and resources, but you can also automate against them. Let me give you a quick example and we're done. I've deployed my brand new VMs in the month of February based on my February updated image. I've tagged all of the systems with a key of image and a value of February. Now it's March. My new March image is ready and I've provisioned all of the VMs that I need for WVD. And now I need to clean up all those old systems. I have an Azure run book and it is looking for any VM that has a tag of image equals February. And the run book has multiple steps where it will first put all of those February systems into drain mode, then it will turn them off and then it will delete and clean up after them. And this process could be further automated by tying it into your DevOps pipeline so that when you provision those March VMs, that is a trigger that initiates the run book and now your update stream is fully automated. So I hope this is been a help to you in knowing how to organize your resources as well as understanding how this all is going to impact WVD. The rest of the playlist for this study guide is right over here as well as the latest video at the Azure Academy up top. And I'm going to keep these videos coming just as fast as I can so go ahead and click that playlist for the next episode. Happy learning!